prophetic act together of prayer, okay? Praise Jesus. Tonight I have this word for you to explain why 2021, it will be the year of signs and wonders. I truly believe that. And I want to release faith in your heart to receive these signs and wonders, to, to really experience these signs and wonders. Amen. Just bow your heads, close your eyes. Holy Spirit, fill this room. Take over this meeting, God. We know this is just a, a, an exchange of time that we are moving to the next year. But for us, it's a prophetic, it's an act of faith that we do together as the family of God, believing the best is yet to come. Amen. Believing God that more than we can ever ask or even imagine, you already have prepared for us. Our hearts are expecting your goodness. That's what we have learned in 2020, God. You had surrounding us with your goodness. And right now, Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see this goodness, the blessings multiplied upon our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. 2019, December 2019, I closed the year with a message that named our year. We call the year of 2019 or 2020, we name it uh, the miraculous year. And a lot of people wonder why. So we had, we were hit with the pandemic on March. And I needed to remind our church about that prophetic word in July. As soon as we, again, kicked off the new season for 2020, the, the last semester, I preached exactly the same message. And today I feel in my heart that God is leading us to the next event, to the next step. But I wanted to remind you some of these blessings that God already gave us in 2020. Luke chapter 9, verse 13. This is an amazing miracle in the Bible. Uh, the Bible uh, have a record of about 38, 38 miracles of Jesus on earth. And among all these uh, 38 miracles, only one miracle is repeated in all the four Gospels, including John. The non-synoptic gospel. The, it is the, the one that doesn't necessarily follow the chronological order of Mark, Matthew, and Luke. It describes the same miracle. The miracle of multiplication. Luke chapter 9, 13. In this account, we read, But he said to them, You give them something to eat. So we're talking about the multiplication of bread and fish for 5,000. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we are to go and buy food for all these things. Now, we named 2020 the year of miraculous because we understood that Jesus is responsible for the miracle. But if you want to turn a miracle, a miraculous event, the disciples have to get participation. They have to get involved. For there were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about 50 each. And they did so, and had them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing over them. And then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. Now, Jesus multiplying the bread... And the fish is not a surprise. He's Jesus. He's God. He can bring things out of nothing. Say a good amen. amen. He doesn't need a store. He doesn't need to uh, have a, a compartment in heaven of blessings. He can call things into existence. Tudor just mentioned Genesis chapter 1. Uh, and, and, and God just said, And light was brought into existence. And He taking the five loaves and two fish, he gave the disciples. But what turns a miracle, a miraculous event, is that God gives His disciples, you and I, His disciples, this miracle to share with others, to spread to others. 
We are, not, we are now part of the miracle. And they all ate. And then he broke the loaves and gave to the disciples who sat before the crown. And they all ate and were satisfied. And that was, and what was left over was picked up 12 baskets of broken pieces. 2020 was a miraculous year indeed. And you have to have your eyes open to see that in order to enter the signs and wonders year. I saw so many brothers growing in their faith, in their participation in the church, in their commitment with the church. A good example is what probably bothered you in the beginning of this service. These young people running around here. It's something that we didn't have in the last year. We call them the media stream team. We didn't have this team before. We never had the need for it. And now they are all the time bothering us and annoying us in the middle of the service. We didn't have this uh, so excellent team on serving every Sunday. We saw the disciples and taking the supply, the miracle that only God can give us and do it. And turning into a miraculous resource. In the beginning of the year, we had only one worship team. And now we have three worship teams. We had only one service. And now we have two services. We were a few leaders. And now we had 17 groups of adults and youth and 17 kids life groups. We had about 20 students graduating from our courses only this semester. Hallelujah. Miracles that became miraculous event because we disciples were part of the miracle. So this is something that we learned in 2020. That when we get involved, we can turn the miracle into a miraculous. When we have our eyes open. To see God's provision in our life and believe in His abundance, in His goodness in our lives. We're going to be able to endure the dark days, the stormy days. We're not only going to endure, but we're going to walk upon the waters that are trying to drown us. When we understand that God multiply our resources and he really used us as his instrument we're going to be able to experience signs and wonders Amen. but let me prepare you a little bit more before we step into the actual uh, year of 2021 let me press on a little bit more on that miracle number one we learned that that miracle happened because someone had to sow for the miracle. John chapter 6 verse 9 says, There was a boy, a boy here, who have five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? A little boy sown his snack, his lunchbox. He offered everything he had to bless Jesus. Some scholars even think that when the disciples were looking for the food and the little boy heard that was Jesus asking, he was just giving to Jesus. He never experienced or expected that Jesus will multiply there more than could, he could ever imagine. In 2019 was the first year in our seventh year of church that I am, as your pastor, receive his first salary. Maybe you didn't know that. For seven years, I did not receive a salary from the church until 2019. So I was expecting at least seven more years to start to pay my first pastor. But in 2020, I pay at least half of his salary now. So it's less than a year and we're already paying. And I believe God has more in store for us. In 2019, we supported missions. In so many countries, we supported in Pakistan, in Brazil, but in 2020, we supported besides Pakistan and Brazil, we supported in India, 
Zambia, Tanzania, Nepal, obvious United States. Our donations in 2019 was about $24,237. But in 2020, we donated $39,134. We increased our donation in 38% compared to 2019. But how is that possible, Pastor? It was a strange year. Like I thought we we're going to lack resource. Actually, in 2020 today, our supervisor, Pastor Marcio, I called him just to check if that information was accurate. But we were the most generous church among all the international churches, vine churches, uh, all around the world. And I called him and he confirmed that. And I said, Pastor, this is a standard from now on. We always are going to be the most generous church among all other churches. So multiplication is a result of generosity. Like we, un when we understand that, when we understand that our first fruit, our tithes, our offerings, your first fruit seed has such impact around the world. God um, has permission to increase your portion. Pastor, but it's all about grace. I love this illustration. I don't know why it came to my mind, but I think this year, because we, for the first time, we also promoted our trunk and treat here in uh, our parking lot. It was the first and so successful. I was so excited for this surprising event promoted by the disciples. Promoted by the disciples. God gave us the miracle, but you turned the miracle a miraculous year. And in this year, looking to the kids going around with, little, with their little bags and baskets, I was wondering about the grace of God. When we give God permission through our generosity, He pretty much gives us a larger basket. His grace is available. All the candies are there. You can pick it up as much as it fits on your basket. But some of you guys are just coming with your small little plastic disposable cup. But God wants to give you a huge basket to increase your portion. Number two, we receive when we are thankful for His provision. John chapter 6 verse 10. Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the man sat down about 5,000 in number. Some scholars believe that because the counting was only the man, probably was about 15 to 20,000 people in that place. Verse 11, Jesus then looked to the loaves, and when he had given thanks, everybody says thanks, he distributed them to those seated, so also the fish as much as they wanted. In a practical way, Jesus asked the people to sit down because probably when, you know, the guy in the very back of the multitude heard there was free food, they're going to just like run over each other. So Jesus said, just everybody sit down and they receive their portion. But obvious this text relates as well to one of our favorite Psalms. Psalm 23, the, Bible's, the Bible reminds us that the Lord is our shepherd and because he is our good shepherd we shall not want you're gonna provide everything we want and need the text continue he makes us lie down in green pastures the multitude had to sit down why because sometimes there's nothing to be done some people complain about 2020 because they felt powerless they felt i i can't i just feel that i can't do anything about this year that's okay there are moments in our lives that the only thing you have to do is to wait is to sit down by the green pastures and allow the good shepherd show his goodness and his provision on your life but but don't think that waiting is a passive thing i was sharing this to one of my uh, friends Pastor Calisto, I told him, I said, look, Calisto, 2020 is just a year to, to wait. 
And I didn't ask you to put that, but it's coming again to my mind. Uh, Isaiah, you can open in your Bible at least once tonight. Come on, everybody. Don't wait for the projection. Uh, prophet Isaiah, chapter 64. The prophet Isaiah, I actually released this word on the Christmas uh, uh, night for my family. Where's my prophet Isaiah? I'm not, oh, sorry. We are here among the major prophets. 64, verse 4. Look how beautiful this text is. From the old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you. A God who acts for those that are doing what? That are just waiting. Some translations instead of acts put he works. He acts, he works, he has the permission to work when we are waiting for him. Some of you guys, because you try everything, you ended up 2020 very exhausted, very frustrated. But we still have a few minutes to learn this beautiful lesson. That maybe the best you can do is just to, a to wait in the Lord. When we sit by His feet on the green pastures, believing His favor, His unmerited favor upon us. He just loved us so much without explanation or reason. There is no merit basis here. He just decided to bless us in a year that a lot of people is hopeless and powerless. While we waited, He acted on our behalf. Oh yes, the Lord is my shepherd. And because I allow Him to be my shepherd, I know I shall not want Thankfulness always brings multiplication. Verse 11 of John chapter 6, the Bible says that Jesus lifted up the two elements, the bread and the fish, and the result of just lifting up and giving thanks to God was multiplication. Your first fruit offering, your attitude toward your church, our church, in giving and being generous, in being faithful, giving with thankfulness, not out of pressure, not because you feel under compulsion or because you press on this subject. No, because you understood that what you have was given by God. And now you're just thankful. You're just counter-reacting. You're just uh, having a, as a fruit of the blessings upon you. Now you give freely and because of that multiplication finds you. Now you have to have your eyes open. Because where I'm going to lead this conversation without perceiving the multiplication, the blessings, the provision on your life. This year, 2020, you won't be able to step into the signs and wonders of 2021. So I know maybe you are sleepy, maybe you are tired, the food is making the reaction now. But please don't lose the train of thought here. You Look, try as I'm still speaking to you to remember the provision of God, the supply of God, the, the abundance of multiplication of God in your life 2020. This is so important. Now, maybe you're just wondering about financial provision. Oh, but pastor, I barely pay my car uh, payments. I had a struggle and I had to call my mortgage company to negotiate my loan. Yeah, that's maybe it was not the part where you were in reach. But I can say to you, I was provided not only in the natural, but our church was richly provided in wisdom, yes. revelation. The word of God never lacked from this pulpit here. Look, I know that. I know because every time I come here, my spirit testified that you are receiving something fresh, solid food. Our church grew not only in terms of numbers and people joining our life groups and financial provision, but you grew as a man of God, as a woman of God. You mature. You, you, your, your kind of conversation is not the same as it was in 2019. You literally grew up so much. Why? Because God is providing us richly 
with His wisdom, revelation, grace that came upon us, not only in the natural, but also in the spiritual. Come on, everybody, say a good amen here. I know you can see that. I know you can look at back and say, that, that's really, I can, I can notice a difference. Like, usually when you're growing up, you don't see yourself growing up. Unless you come back, like my boys came back from Brazil for about a month, and now they are trying to dress their own clothes here. And he was complaining because he says, these shirts are so small. What happened with the shirts? I said, no, no, nothing happened with the shirts. It happened with you. You grew up. And now he's realizing he grew up. He actually felt the growth in his body. And you probably are not able to dress the same shirts you dress that you dressed in 2019. At the end of 2020, the same clothes, the same conversations, the same words that you used to speak are not part of your mouth anymore because you were richly provided. You, you experienced multiplication and growth. Come on, somebody, say amen in the house. Amen. Number three, the measure of God is greater than our need. Let me explain this. While... We read in uh, Psalm 23, and we understood that God gave everything the people needed. The text is more precise. Mark chapter 6, verse 42 says, And they all ate and were satisfied. John chapter 6, verse 11 says that they ate it until they did not want anymore. Verse 43 of Mark again, And they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Why Jesus did not multiply exactly the portion the 5,000 multitude needed? Why? Because God provides us more than we actually need. Because the measure of God's multiplication is much greater than we can even ask. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will supply every need, not according to your need, not according to your small basket, not according to your maturity, not according to your ability, but according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. The multitude received all that they wanted, and they were all satisfied. The disciples, each one, and this is only my interpretation, got their own basket of food that probably share even with the neighbors around. Because the measure of God is always greater than our need. Let me invite you to stand up. If you can find one of the first fruit envelopes behind your chair... Uh, pick it up. Please, everybody stand up. I just want to some sound over here. And even if, you're, even if you already gave your first fruit offer, you're going to get the envelope. You're going to have during the whole month of January to give. But tonight is a special moment. Tonight is a special prophetic moment that you can express to God. God, here it is, the fruit of my thankfulness. Here it is, God, the result of the multiplication you richly provided me in 2020. God, I testify that 2020 was a miraculous year. But not only that, God, here it is, the first expression of my faithfulness for 2021. God, I'm going to give you my first fruit offering as a token, as an expression that I know, God, you always provide, so you receive first. You deserve always the first. Now, let me challenge you in a bold step of faith. Our first fruit offering is not your standard offering, okay? Uh, your first fruit offering, in somehow, will represent all the offerings that are going to come up the rest of the year. So I learned this when I was in the beginning of my adult life. I just, you know, received these in my heart. And I start to practice this pretty much every year since my adult life. In my first fruit offering, I pray about it. I ask the Lord what He wants from me. 
And usually, I give you this offering, what I would like to tithe to the Lord the rest of the next year. Now, you don't need to do that. Even this year, I won't do that. This year, I will give more than I know that probably I'll tithe. I know this. But the Lord already placed an amount in my heart that uh, naturally speaking, not that I'm limiting God, uh, I, I, I maybe no, won't happen necessarily like that. But uh, maybe the Lord wants just to challenge you in that direction. I'm going to bring today a token, a representation of a tithe that I wish to give to my God every single month or every 15 days. I want to I wanna give God this expression of this prophetic tithe. This is my first expression of everything that God we're going to provide me in the next year. Give me an envelope, please, with me. Find an envelope behind the chairs or somewhere. Someone, please, Daniel. First fruit. Thank you. So I want to, if you can, if you can, get one envelope, one per family. Maybe we don't have for everybody. But if, if, even if you don't have it, just as an act of faith, as an act of faith, lift it up your hands. If you have the envelope, hold the envelope up. Let me bless your life. Let me release this portion. I love what Paul says to the Philippians. He says, look, there is no need over me. I don't have any need. But I know when you bless me, you increase your credit. Philippians chapter 4, Paul says, Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And then he completes with the statement I just read. And my God will supply, and that's the blessing I'm, re I'm releasing upon you right now. And my God will supply every need of yours. Not according to your needs, but according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Eyes closed, hands up. Father, we believe in these blessings. We receive these blessings, God. We receive because through the multiplication of the resources you give us, we can experience signs and wonders. We are promoted to the next dimension of growth. That is not only multiplication. That is not only provision in abundance. But it's more than that. It is signs and wonders. God, fill our hearts with faith. This crazy, crazy bold faith. To believe that you want to provide us. To supply us according to your riches, according to your power, according to your limitless, endless grace. So God, tonight, with a humble attitude, we approach receiving, and that's why we give freely, generously, in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen and amen. And I mean, the buckets are going to go around, but you can text message. You can use our platforms as usual. And after you do that, please take your seat once again so we can continue the message. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. It was just a background. You did a great job. You guys came all prepared, ready to sing or something. You guys are crazy to sing. All right. Now, I still have 20 minutes. But I will use only 18 minutes. Let me lead you to the next point of the message. Because, again, 
as strange as it might sound to your ears, miracles sometimes are questionable. What I mean about that is that some people uh, learning about the multiplication of the bread and the fish, they thought that maybe that miracle wasn't an actual miracle. What happened here was a, a co commotion. It was a crowd commotion. Because that small teenager just donated his food. Now the crowd was moved together and they realized they had more food that they actually needed. And everybody shared their portion, and they ended up having pretty much what we had tonight. We, they had leftovers. You brought your portion, and we had leftovers. But that is a very liberal interpretation. Even though it's a beautiful account or pro, pro, possible approach, it's not biblical. I believe in the miracle. But the point is, some miracles are questionable was just a matter of coincidence. Oh, no, no, no. This only happened by chance. Now, let me... This is a matter of interpretation. But let me say something. When we have our eyes open to see the miracle of multiplication, God leads us to experience signs and wonders. And about signs and wonders, nobody questions. It is an unquestionable act of God. So in all the accounts of this miracle, the miracle of multiplication, the following story is what most of us already know. It is Jesus walking over the water. Let's take a look on this story in Mark chapter 6, verse 45. Immediately, he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to the Bethsaida. While he dismissed the crowd, the same crowd that just ate a macfish, bread and fish. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up to the mountain to pray. 47. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he, in the twelve, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, 49. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and cried out. For they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded. For they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. Now let me lead you to the second portion of our message and finally Preparing you for the year of signs and wonders. Yes. Number one, we might face tribulation. And it's important that I tell you this right now because maybe you entered from 2019 to 2020 unaware that in this world we might face tribulation. The Bible says in verse 45 that Jesus made, that Jesus compelled, that Jesus constrained the disciples to get into the boat. In this world, we're going to navigate in uh, trials waters. We don't have an option. The church has to be at the world, but the world should not be in the church. Verse 48, and Jesus saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. So let me remind you, 2021 
It is a year of signs and wonders. But maybe, maybe you might face tribulation. Like you were not expecting at the end of 2019 that the next year will give you by March a pandemic. But in this world, we might face tribulation. Someone asked uh, one of my favorite pastors, Pastor Rick, Pastor Rick Warren, they ask why God allowed this whole disease come upon the world. I love his simple answer. He said, we're not in heaven yet, my friend. In this world, we might face tribulation. John chapter 16, 33, I have said these things to you, that in me, not in the news, not in social media, but in me, you may have peace. Don't expect peace from any other source. Expect peace from me. In the world, you will have tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world. But the Lord is not indifferent to our pain. Even though we might face tribulation, the Lord is up to the mountain and He is very aware of our pain. Jesus noticed that they had way painfully, that they had difficulty. They had this wind against them. Now, there are many uh, meanings for the word wind in the Bible. I'm just going to emphasize one of the meanings. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Wind means doctrine. So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine. Everybody says wind of doctrine. Wind of doctrine. By human canny, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. I again blame the pandemic of social media that suddenly there are so many theologians out there, so many experts in science, politics, Oh man, we have a lot of them right now in our social media. And they all have the right word. They all know the truth. They are ready to defend their case and, you know, defend it at all costs. We live in a time there are so many wind of doctrines to really bump upon you and make you to shake like never before. We are surrounded by all kinds of wind of doctrines. We have to stand firm in the Word. That's why the first series that I'm not in, uh, in haste to close, but the first series we're going to have in 2021, we're going to be a Bible study. We're going to study, we're going to study verse by verse the book of Galatians. Without haste, we're going to go verse by verse. Why? Because the Bible is the solid ground we stand in the windy days. Because there is nothing more important than to be rooted in the solid teaching, in the solid doctrine of the gospel. I counsel so many people that are struggling with their feelings. Sadly, some people took hasty decisions in 2020 based solely in their feelings. Pastor, I'm just feeling like that. I don't care what you feel. What the Bible t says about that. It doesn't matter that your depression, your sadness, your loneliness, your hopelessness. But I'm discouraged, Pastor. How do I feel? How do I deal with my feelings? The Bible says that the problems are not the feelings. It is all about our mind. It is the doctrines that determine our feelings. Because you have the wrong doctrine, because you have the wrong belief, you think in the wrong way, and consequentially, you're going to feel wrongly. You're going to have uh, waves of feelings up, but also very down, and winds of doctrines that are going to lead you to wrong decisions. Number two, the Lord is always walking upon our trials. You might face tribulation, 
But don't forget, the Lord is upon it all. Verse 48, about the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. And he meant to pass by them. In the time of the Bible, the night was divided in four nights. Six to nine, nine to twelve, twelve to three, three to six a.m. They were at the very end of the night. They were rowing the whole night, very tired, exhausted, deep dark. And now this being is walking upon the water. I'm probably going to cry out as well. Is it a ghost or something else? The Lord was showing them that he's walking upon the darkness, upon the very thing that is trying to drown, that was trying to drown the disciples. When you face tribulation in 2021, don't forget, the Lord is Almighty God. He walks upon it all. When Jesus came to the disciples, he says, Stay heart, verse 50. It is I. He said the name of Almighty God. He reminded the disciples of Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. When God gave his name, he said, Moses, I am who I am. And this is my name. You tell to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. When Jesus come to you in 2021, in the middle of your trial, don't forget he's everything you need to overcome the trial. But number three is the most important principle. Verse 51. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded. Wait a minute. Jesus is already in the boat. Jesus made calm come upon the storm, but they were utterly astounded. They were still amazed. They were very Surprise and in shock. Why? Why they were like that? Verse 52. Don't lose this point. This is the revelation for the night. And this is what is going to lead you to the signs and wonders in 2021. Verse 52. For they still didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the loaves. Their hearts were too hard to take in. What is the reason why a lot of people drown in 2020? Because they forgot the day that God provided them. The day that they saw provision of God. The day that the Lord blessed them. It's very important that we keep our hearts always in the promise. The Lord is faithful. He's always providing not only what I need, not only the immediately need. The Lord is giving me more than I ever can ask. You only have faith to walk upon the water and overcome the headwinds, the adverse waves, the dangerous currents. If you remember the miracle of multiplication. So let me say something very important for 2021. Never forget 2020. Never forget 2020. What, Pastor? The pandemic? No. The multiplication that came upon your life. All the blessings. In the midst of the darkest time, you saw provision. God took care of you. You are alive. You are healthy. You have your family. You are blessed. You are surrounded by His grace. Never forget 2020. And you will see not only miracles, but signs and wonders. Again, miracles can be confused as coincidence, as an accident. But when people look at you and see you walking upon what is drowning everybody around you, but you are overcoming, they're going to see. This is a sign. This is a wonder. This is unquestionable. The grace of God crowning you, blessing you. It is God putting His favor upon you in a way that it is unquestionable. Pastor, I'm facing a disease, a health issue. 
And you're insisting for me, insisting tonight, that what is the most important miracle I should look in my life is the miracle of provision, is the miracle of multiplication. Yes, let me insist with it. But pastor, I didn't experience provision. You probably experience. The problem is that you are like the disciples. You did not meditate enough. You did not remind your heart enough. And that's why now your heart is hardened. The first time I had this revelation, I started to talk with my father. My dad is a very prosperous man. He has more than enough. For the end of his life, he has more than enough. And it's so sad for me and my siblings, my sisters and my brother, to see that he cannot experience and enjoy the blessings. He has so much. He is well supplied. But if he loses a deal, a business, he feels that he's bankrupting, that he's now completely poor. And sometimes we struggle so much as his children to talk and show him, Dad, just have your eyes open to see the multiplication in your life. And I was share with him and in tears in his eyes, he told me, I definitely experienced so many times the multiplication, but I feel that my heart got hardened. Don't let this happen to you. But pastor, I feel like that. I don't have faith tonight to see the multiplication in my life. Let me invite you to stand up right now. And I'm going to project to you two verses to help you out. To see and to expect multiplication. Not only for the next year, for the years to come. But also I want you to have your eyes open. Because God will not only supply you with multiplication. But he will bring you to the signs and wonders. What will be a sign? What will be a wonder in your life? Maybe it's not only get a better job position. Maybe it's you open your own business. Hallelujah. Maybe you're not only going to renovate our church building. Maybe you're going to buy our church building. Yeah. What are going to be a sign and wonder in your life? Maybe you that is expecting just a promotion. We're going to see the overflowing of blessings upon your life. Maybe you are just looking for that resource of God that will allow you to finally pay that medical bill. But we're going to be a sign and wonder, a miracle, a healing, a miraculous healing. Amen. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Bring the food tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you, and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Let me hear a good amen in the house. Amen. Let's go to the New Testament, 2 Corinthians. Chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Say after me, my God is able, is able to make all grace, make all grace abound, to abound to me, abound to my family, to my family. so that having all sufficiency, so all sufficiency in, all things, in all things, in at all times, at all times I, may abound I may abound in every good work. Every good Say a good amen again. Amen. The Lord is giving us more than we need. What I have to do, Pastor, you have to believe with me. You have to have your eyes open for the multiplication. Let's do this as a family right now. If you have your relatives with you, get close to your family right now. Get close to your family. You're going to start to worship Jesus. And it's time for you to get ready. We're going to cross 
to the next year, reminding our hearts of His amazing blessings of 2020. So many.